We have seen tremendous volatility within a range of commodities, some of that due to European sovereign debt concerns, others due to slowing growth numbers in Asia. Nevertheless, sourcing professionals will want to keep a close eye on the following. The Euro and US dollar, particularly as the Euro continues to fall against the dollar, this could create new buying opportunities for raw materials for US-based buyers. Oil prices have hovered between $90 and $100 a barrel and have slipped in recent days. Natural gas prices have drifted slightly in recent weeks as winter weather in the north has remained somewhat mild. Meanwhile, gasoline prices around the country have continued to decline, though the lower Atlantic and Midwest regions have seen some very slight upticks. Diesel fuel prices, which also contribute to many fuel surcharges imposed by producers, such as steel producers, showed declines across the board in mid-December. Meanwhile, the VIX, or fear index, remains just under that magic 25 point. Readings above 25 indicate a greater degree of market volatility. We continue to watch the VIX closely, as it often serves as a buying signal when volatility drops for a range of commodities. London Metal Exchange three-month aluminum prices touched a low of 1975 per metric ton, a price not seen since July of 2010. Our friends at Harbor Aluminum attribute the decline to US dollar highs against the euro and a basket of currencies, lingering concerns about the eurozone's sovereign debt crisis, and short selling by funds. China's copper imports accelerated to a 20-month high in November, with 452,000 metric tons of refined metal, alloy, anode, and products flowing through customs last month. Prior to November, annual imports were down from 2010 by almost 10%. But as the LME price has fallen, imports have accelerated. However, while Chinese GDP is still quite positive at about 8.5%, it is down on last year's 10% growth, with falling PMI numbers pointing to a cooling of demand. Rapidly rising copper consumption therefore runs contrary to all other indicators, and taking copper's speculative role in the Chinese supply chain, it is more likely that we are seeing a mini-repeat of the 2009 restocking, when China imported massive volumes of all metals to replenish stocks and take advantage of historically low prices. Meanwhile, steel prices have seen some lifts during this fourth quarter, particularly for hot-rolled coil, cold-rolled coil, and hot-dip galvanized. However, plate prices remain flat and have fallen slightly throughout Q4. Our friends at Gerdau Market Update still point to several factors that have kept flat rolled product prices from rising, primarily service center inventory levels, construction spending, and durable goods orders, which have slipped slightly. In this month's one-on-one -on -one segment, I sat down with my London-based colleague and metal miner co-founder, Stuart Burns. Stewart is a regular contributor to Metal Miner and has an ownership stake in a specialty metals distribution company. We thought it would make sense to get the European perspective on the economy as well as Stewart's unique insights into metals markets. Stewart, how much of an impact on metals demand do you think we'll see with a slowing China? Yeah, that's a great question. That's one that's uh, on a lot of people's minds. I think the important thing to remember is that we've got a slowing China, but we haven't got a stopping China. China's going to continue to grow. We're probably going to see 8, 8.5% uh, growth in gross domestic product. We're going to see construction continue with uh, massive investment in social housing. So I think the reality is that um, we'll see China as less of a driver in terms of global demand for metals in 2012 than we saw maybe in 2010. But uh, for metal prices have dropped so much that in certain metals, such as uh, nickel, such as aluminum, so it's the thing. It's getting towards the cost curve for Chinese producers, and imports could actually uh, continue to run at quite significant levels, possibly even increase from where they are at the moment, because domestic producers in China can't afford to compete at the levels that metal prices have reached. One uh, issue I wanted to catch up with you and get your opinion on was where do you see steel prices going in 2012? That's a great question, Stuart, because we're seeing some interesting dynamics even looking at our own metal miner index. 
First, we're seeing that prices had troughed uh, sometime in the third week of November. Uh, and since then, we've seen some upticks, both for hot rolled coil and cold rolled coil, as well as hot dip galvanized. We've also seen some new support for, for scrap prices as well. So those are all, uh, you know, suggesting prices are kind of coming up a little bit. Now, where they go is another matter. Uh, what's curious, though, is steel plate prices still appear to be sliding, even though they're sliding quite, you know, from a very small, a small amount uh, from week to week, but still they're sliding a little bit. And so, you know, I think steel prices are going to kind of bobble a little bit, but I think we're going to see the same trend that we've seen in the last three years with sort of a slow ascent through Q1, maybe into Q2, and then uh, prices coming off uh, once inventory levels uh, have been reached. And I think, you know, inventory levels are going to be reached earlier in 2012 than they were in previous years. So I don't see a big sell-off, but I don't see the same uh, percentage increases, certainly not double-digit increases that are going to be sustainable throughout 2012. I'm going to turn the page now and uh, ask you another question, Stuart. What's your take on non-ferrous metal prices for 2012? I know uh, aluminum is close to your heart, so wh where do you see markets going in 2012 on the non-ferrous side? The market has already factored in a lot of the bad news out there. It's factored in uh, fear of what's happening in Europe, concerns about a slowing China, and uh, we've seen prices come off quite dramatically during this year. Now, many of those metals are getting close to their cost per for certain producers in certain countries, it's uneconomic to produce some of these metals. So, I think what we'll see is uh, a flaw under the price for some metals, such as zinc, uh, such as aluminum, probably. Uh, although there's no great driver to push those price levels any higher than they are at the moment, um, I don't think we'll see them drop too much further. Uh, big issue really, I think, for metals markets is the degree of restocking that is going to go on in China. I think if I was a buyer at the moment, I'd be tending to live hand to mouth. Uh, I don't see any news out there to suggest that metal prices are about to take off. What's your take on um, the LME markets for the contracts for Mali uh, and Cobalt? How are they doing? What are we going to see for them in 2012? And then the second part of the question is, what are some of the commodity risk management strategies uh, you think buyers can avail themselves of next year? Well, I think as far as Molly and Cobalt are concerned, it's still very much early days for, uh, for those metals on the LME. We've seen in the past when new contracts have been introduced, uh, it happened with aluminum, it happened uh, a few years ago with steel billet, but uh, it was really only superficial trade interest that became involved in the markets to begin with. The, uh, the major producers and major consumers tended not to get involved in the market until there was enough liquidity there to make them confident that the price levels were a true reflection of what was happening in the wider marketplace. So I think it's going to take time for Molly and Cobalt to take off. I do think they've got a future and I think in the long run it will provide a, a great market for particularly for processes in the marketplace that uh, are having to hold poly and cobalt, it will give them the opportunity to hedge their risks. But I think it's still going to be another couple of years before those markets have got enough liquidity to be meaningful. If I was a buyer in today's market, I think I would be, uh, have one eye on the long term and one eye on the short term. I think as far as the short term is concerned, I'd be living very much hand to mouth. Uh, I think this terms of a look at Long term, uh, I think we are seeing prices for many metals, uh, as I mentioned earlier, close to the cost curve. And current price levels could be, in the medium to long term, a good place to, 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 to be hedging from. If you have the mechanism to hedge more than three to six months out, we have access to futures markets, we lock in prices for the long term for the suppliers. Sitting here in Europe, uh, in the midst of a Euro crisis, we, we look with some envy at what's happening in the US and uh, the resilience of the economy there, how it's come out of the last crisis, um, uh, defied quite a few critics. 
And what's your take on the US economy and, and its impacts on metal prices next year? Because it could be a big driver. Well, I'm a bit uh, of a glass half full kind of person. I think I'm uh, leaning towards cautious optimism for 2012. Um, you know, we've got an energy sector that, quite frankly, is on fire, that's driving a lot of metal demand. We have an automotive sector that, though it hasn't returned to pre-recession levels, is definitely in growth mode. It's done better each year since the recession. Those are two great drivers. I think I mentioned commercial construction kind of up and down, but slightly trending up. And I think we're at the bottom of the residential uh, housing crisis. And so I think there's only one way to go there, and that's up. Are we talking 5% growth? No way. I think we're still going to be in that 2 2.5%. Uh, you know, if everything goes well, if we, do, if we avoid... Uh, a European debt crisis, if we avoid uh, Asia, or in particular China, going into uh, hard landing mode, I think as long as they're in soft landing, as long as the Euro's in check, I think uh, the U.S. ought to be uh, doing fairly well in 2012. So we are somewhat optimistic. Let me take uh, a moment to flip the question back to you. Uh, being, I know you're based in London, but hopefully you can share with us some of your perspective and where you think the European markets are going for 2012. Well, you know that Europeans don't agree with the Brits at all about what's <laughs> happening in Europe, so I don't know how valid my, my response would be, but uh, looking at it from here, uh, it's almost a, a game of two halves. Uh, on an industrial level, Europe's doing okay. You look at the PMI figures and so on, uh, for the core countries such as Germany, France, and although we're not part of the euro, the economy here in the UK, from a manufacturing point of view, is doing all right. When you speak to manufacturing companies, they're ticking along relatively well. The Germans were doing very well up until a few months ago. Uh, exports were phenomenally strong. Uh, and that's going to carry through into 2012. The worry is that the, uh, the euro crisis begins to impact the banks, and then the banks cut off funding to industry and to, com to commercial enterprises. And that's the great unknown. Now, are the politicians going to reach some form of agreement uh, and solve this problem, are there, or are they going to continue to prevaricate and delay things as they have done for most of this year? The omens are not good, I have to say. Um, and I think uh, I, I'm not alone in, in suspecting that um, uh, Germany and France in particular um, have already discounted some of the peripheral states uh, from the future in Europe, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't think that Euro, the Europe is going to take off with, with strong growth next year. I think at best, even if it avoids a recession, it's going to be flat. So we can't look to Europe to pull the world uh, into growth mode next year. Great. Well, thank you, Stuart. We appreciate you joining us today and wish you a good evening. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.